Good morning, it's great to be here. I'm Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone. I want to uh, introduce a number of my colleagues who are uh, joining us here for this um, uh, really significant moment for Long Island. I want to uh, recognize, of course, thank uh, our uh, great governor, uh, Andrew Cuomo, who is here and is going to be speaking in just a few moments. Uh, but my uh, new colleague, Nassau County Executive Laura Curran, um, and we were just uh, together at the Long Island Association. Kev, uh, Kevin Law, the President and CEO, just a tremendous event. I want to thank him. Uh, we're also joined by Town of Babylon Supervisor Rich Schaefer. Uh, also, uh, you know, we're standing on, I've never, um, before, and uh, hearing a train may be coming, but feeling totally safe about it. <laughs> Not only because the governor was next to me, but uh, knowing that uh, Anthony Simon, uh, the general chairman of the uh, Smart Transportation Union, and his guys were on the train. Thank you, Anthony, for uh, the, the great job you guys do. Uh, and of course, uh, we have our great uh, labor leaders here, John Durso, uh, Roger Clayman, Long Island Federation of Labor, our past president of the National Suffolk Building Trades Council, Dick O'Kane, and uh, Mary Aristich, Maddie Aristich, the business manager, Insulators Local 12, and the new uh, uh, head of the Long Island Building Trades uh, Council. And thank you to everyone else uh, who is here today. I just want to say very briefly before I introduce the MTA Chief Development Officer, Jano Lieber, this is an incredibly exciting moment for Long Island. You know, we've been thinking about and talking about uh, this double track project uh, for a, a long time. And to be out here and to see those, those railroad ties being laid, to see that track actually being built and understanding what it means for Long Island's future, our ability to create jobs, grow our economy, uh, to build a, a better, broader, more sustainable economic future. That's what that means out there. And this project, the third track project, which is absolutely critical to Long Island, these are the kinds of things and the kinds of projects that just sort of were stuck in the mud for years and years and years. And it took a leader in Governor Cuomo to step forward and push these projects forward and make them happen. And I couldn't be more thrilled to be here today to actually see this track being laid. Uh, with that, I want to turn it over and oh, go on my team. And I want to turn it over to the man who is keeping us safe on those tracks today and the man responsible for uh, the double track project, the third track project, our great governor, the 56th governor of the great state of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Governor, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, it's my pleasure. It's always a pleasure to be with Steve Ballone, who's doing a great job for uh, Suffolk County. It's especially to, nice to be with Steve Ballone when we're not in the middle of a snowstorm or an ice storm or a bomb cyclone or anything like that. Uh, just a little fog today, which is a good day for us to be together. Uh, our new colleague, uh, Laura Curran, who's the Nassau County Executive. The Nassau-Suffolk relationship is very important. Uh, Long Island is working together as a region in a long time, uh, and that makes all the difference in the world. You know, Nassau, for many years, was considered one entity. Suffolk was a different entity. It doesn't work that way. They are not only neighbors, they're interconnected, they're linked. And that partnership is important, it's working. Kevin Law from the Long Island Association, whose group itself uh, makes that point. We have a number of labor leaders who are here and without whom uh, this, this project would not be possible. Uh, starting with Anthony Simon, who is a great labor leader, uh, understands the need to get this done and get it done quickly and he has been uh, phenomenal to work with. We have a longtime friend from the Long Island Fed and RWDSU, John Durso. Uh, I look a lot younger than uh, he does, I know, but we're longtime friends. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have Dick Kane, uh, who's been a great uh, leader for the building trades. Let's give him a round of applause. And uh, Matt Arasich, who's uh, also been a great labor leader and a partner in progress. Let's give him a round of applause. 
We have John O'Lever, who is uh, the new head of the MTA development. He has brought phenomenal experience. I worked with him in Washington, D.C. during the Clinton administration. Uh, he's also been in the private sector. So he understands about getting projects done and getting them done on time. And that's exactly the expertise he's brought here. So let's give him a round of applause. You know, the Long Island Railroad is an interesting story. 1834, they first built the Long Island Railroad, 1834. And think about it. They built the Long Island Railroad to go from Manhattan to the tip of Long Island for one purpose, which was to connect to a ferry, and the ferry would take you to Boston. That's why they built the Long Island Railroad, just to get to the ferry. That was their daring. That was their vision. That's how gutsy they were. All that distance just to get to a ferry. As it turns out, the ferry route doesn't work out. Uh, it's not economically feasible. So the original purpose of building the railroad actually didn't occur. But what it did do was it opened up a conduit to Long Island. And now people could get out to Long Island and they could take the train back to Manhattan. And the explosion of the Long Island development then started. Parkways, expressways were built, and it started bringing people out. So the LIRR starts as this great, bold vision. And then uh, along the way, we lose that daring, we lose that boldness, and we let the LIRR deteriorate. The population increases, the demand increases, it's equipment, it switches, uh, electric, electrical si switches, it's steel, and we let it deteriorate for decades. And then we got to a point of delays and breakdowns and overcrowding, et cetera. Well, why didn't we do anything? Well, number one, it's expensive. Number two, no one wants construction. Uh, the quote unquote NIMBY factor uh, is a problem, especially on Long Island. So we did nothing. And now we've gotten to a point where the delays are intolerable. And we got together, everyone you see, Nassau and Suffolk, labor and management and the MTA, and we said enough is enough. We have to modernize the Long Island Railroad and we have a $6.6 .6 billion plan to do that. $6.6 .6 billion is the single largest infrastructure in history on Long Island. And this is not a piecemeal project. This is a modernization from one end to the other. Over 100 projects are contained within the modernization. We're lo looking today at the second track. The second track is about 13 miles and goes from Ronkonkoma to Farmingdale. The other big track laying project is what's called the third track. Uh, and that is about um, that is about 12 miles, goes from Floral Park to Hicksville. Those are the two main track laying programs. But we're redoing 39 stations. We're building parking garages, multi-story parking garages, so commuters have a place to park. We're redoing the switches. We're redoing all the equipment. We're updating it with customer-friendly uh, conveniences on the trains and in the stations. And most importantly, we're getting it done. We're getting it done. You know, when you say to people, government is going to undertake a big project, their eyes roll. Why? Because they hear a government project, they hear inefficiency, they hear overruns, they hear waste. Uh, and that it's never going to happen in their lifetime. 
Uh, that's the cynicism that people have. Why? Because too many government projects were just that. They were slow and wasteful, etc. cetera. Uh, that's not how we're doing it. We've employed new methods that have never been done before. We have what's called a design-build process where we basically get government out of the construction business because that's not what government does. And we turn it over to private sector companies that do it. Uh, we hold the private sector contractors' feet to the fire, and we expect them to get it done and get it done when they say they get it done. And we're bringing in technology and equipment we never, we've never used before, like the track laying machine that is behind us. Uh, this is a specialized piece of equipment. It works all around the country. It can do about one mile per day. Uh, it greatly reduces the number of people who have to work on it. It greatly expedites the entire project. Of the 100 projects that we're working on, 24 will be finished this year. Another 21 will be started this year. So this is a very aggressive, ambitious timetable. This project, the second track, is actually going to be done 16 months ahead of schedule. So when was the last time you heard a government project being done ahead of schedule? So we have to keep the partnership. We have to keep the coordination every day, every day, every day, uh, being diligent and making sure we clear whatever roadblocks, or in this case, whatever track blocks we run into. But I want to thank everyone for their partnership. Uh, the county executives, I want to thank the labor leaders. Everyone is doing everything they can to say, let's not do it the old way, let's do it the new way, let's do it together, and let's get it done. Uh, the terminus for the Long Island Railroad in Manhattan is going to be a new station that will be an annex to Penn Station. Penn Station uh, is way beyond its time. It's run by Amtrak. It's a terrible destination point. I call it the seven levels of hell. They don't <laughs> like it, but it's true. Across the street, we're building a brand new train hall, the Farley Train Hall, which is going to be state of the art and this train will come into that hall. So it'll be a totally different experience for Long Island commuters. This is also part of an overall network we're rebuilding. We're building a new LaGuardia Airport, a new JFK Airport. We've gone to cashless tolling. We're doing work on the roads. So when you put it all together, it's going to fundamentally transform Long Island for the better. And again, thank you to all my partners. Any questions for myself or County Executive Ballone or County Executive Curran? Um, yes. the, with the extra volume on the double track and the third track, is that going to cause congestion for motorists? Congestion for motorists? Yeah, actually, uh, it's going to also expedite the situation for motorists because part of the project is removing grade crossings that not only slow traffic, but they're also very dangerous. If you look back, many lives have been lost on grade crossing accidents. So we're actually replacing a number of grade crossings, starting with those that have been the most dangerous. But uh, overall, the more people you get to take the Long Island Railroad, the less people you have on the road. You know, when the Long Island Railroad doesn't work, people say, let me get in the car and get on the Long Island Expressway or the Southern State or the Northern State. Uh, that is not an option. It's bad for the environment and bad for the environment. The commute has become extraordinarily long. So improving the LIRR, Adding capacity is the best thing you can do to remove and alleviate congestion. Uh, 
Uh, it doesn't. You know, there may be uh, some coordination between the train operation and the construction, but that's all been scheduled and that's all been choreographed. Uh, we want to make sure we don't affect the, uh, the current timeline. The uh, situation, there's been a complaint made against a senator in Albany uh, by the name of Jeff Klein, a sexual harassment complaint. Uh, I immediately called for an independent investigation. There's going to be an independent investigation. Uh, and uh, I think we should wait to see what that investigation says. Uh, but as a general rule, uh, there has been a rash, as everybody knows, of women now having courage to come forward and speak about sexual harassment complaints. And I actually think that is a good thing. And I think this is a moment where we can actually make reforms that should have been made decades ago. I propose to have a uniform anti-harassment policy in all governments in the state. I'm going to try to get that passed this year. Uh, complaint lines so women can issue complaints without divulging privacy. But there's no doubt that this has been a dirty little secret of society for a long time. Society has now looked in the mirror. Women have come forward and I applaud them. And we have to have a better system all across the board. One second. I just want to prove the point that the construction is not slowing train operation in any way. <laughs> okay, you have your answer? Uh, I think the president's comments were ugly. I think they were disgusting. Uh, I think they were repulsive. Uh, I think they degraded the office of the president. Um, and I also think it bespeaks a mentality that doesn't really understand what this country is all about in the first place. Make America great again. I don't believe the president understands what made America great in the first place. Uh, immigration made America, America, right? There was no one here. Uh, there were, besides the Native Americans, there was no one here. We put up a sign. We invited the poor, people seeking opportunity from all across the globe, and they came. And by the way, nobody who came came rich and came with opportunity. Otherwise, they wouldn't have come. They would have stayed where they were. They came because they were poor. They came because they were seeking opportunity. My people, Italian-Americans, they came. They were ditch diggers, my grandfather used to say. He said ditch diggers because he didn't really want to say he was digging the ditches for sewer pipes. That's what he did when he came here. Uh, so that is the story of America. Uh, generation after generation of immigrants who came from different places and our concept was you come here, we welcome you, we don't judge you by the color of your skin or your race or, race or religion and we invite you to join the family of New York, the family of America. Uh, this is the exact opposite of that. Uh, and it's sad and ugly for the people who have been offended by it in our state. Uh, I'm sorry for the pain that they feel, but uh, it's, not, it's not representative of how the American people feel. It's not representative of how New Yorkers feel. We're about to go to a reception where we're going to swear in the first African-American sheriff of Suffolk County, who happens to be the first African-American who has won a county-wide election for a non-judicial seat. So uh, the people are ahead of the president. They're not judging by color of skin.
You know, the, uh, the state, the governor's office doesn't make that decision. It's made by the state education department. Um, they said they are going to review the Hempstead School District to see if the Hempstead School District has a plan to turn it around. Uh, I have been very aggressive in my posture. If a school is failing, you're failing the students. The first obligation is to the students. Uh, if you don't have a real, credible, immediate plan for correction, then the state should come in and take over the school. Yeah, I blame all of them. Uh, I blame the private company that operated the terminal, uh, the contractors who were brought in, the Port Authority who was doing the uh, overall supervision. Uh, I blame all of them. Uh, it was uh, unconscionable. I understand things happen. Pipes burst. There was record snowfall. I understand the circumstantial uh, situation but there was still no excuse for what happened. The Port Authority has brought in a gentleman named Ray LaHood, former Federal Transportation Secretary. He's a top pro, but uh, they're going to do an investigation. We have to know exactly who or what is to blame, and it has to be fixed because we're better than this. How about the Columbus Day? Yay, Columbus days. <laughs> I was always with Columbus. I'm still with Columbus, and I'm happy that Columbus is staying. Thank you guys. That's a wide diversity. Oh, yeah. They're coming to an ending. I don't think they're going to ask me about Lauren.